The Juju Shortbow, one of the most sought after weapons in the entirety of Hypixel Skyblock because of the sheer power it has to wipe out all of the early and mid game dungeons with ease. The only problem is its really difficult requirement, Enderman Slayer 5. Enderman Slayer 5 is quite the tough challenge for your average early to mid game player, locking this complete game changing weapon to only those who go the extra mile to acquire it. While getting Enderman Slayer carries is an option and will let you hit those requirements with no effort, they can be very expensive and they also completely ruin the grind that is reaching Enderman Slayer 5. This leaves many players stuck because they really want to use this power for weapon, but just have no means to do so. After doing this exact same grind on a fresh profile with very bare bone stats, I have figured out a very simple, easy, and foolproof progression system to get you all the way up to Enderman Slayer 5. And it doesn't involve doing a thousand tier ones or anything of a similar degree. So with that being said, I present to you an early gamer's guide to defeating Enderman Slayer bosses. So how difficult is reaching Enderman Slayer 5? What exactly are you working with when talking about these requirements? Let me break everything down for you so we can figure out exactly how to tackle this challenge. For starters, Enderman Slayer 5 requires 5,000 Enderman Slayer XP to achieve. If I convert this into boss kills, it would take 10 tier 4 kills, 50 tier 3 kills, 200 tier 2 kills or 1000 tier 1 kills to reach this hefty goal. Now we can already see that doing tier 4s would be extremely fast and smash this requirement with no problems, but the vast majority of players will not be readily equipped to tackle this form of the boss, so I'm going to rule out this option entirely. Tier 3s will require 5 times the amount of bosses compared to tier 4s, but these bosses are much more manageable. However, they're still not that easy for someone who's just getting started, so I'll come back to these a little bit later. This leaves us with either 200 tier 2 kills or 1000 tier 1s, and if you have any care for your sanity at all, there is no way that you would complete 1000 tier 1s to reach this goal. That leaves us with tier 2s, so let's just focus on these for the time being. Now while it does take 200 tier 2s to reach Enderman Slayer 5, this grind doesn't have to be done entirely off of tier 2 bosses. For example, Enderman Slayer 3 unlocks the Void Edge Katana and Enderman Slayer 4 unlocks the Final Destination armor, both extremely useful tools for taking down the harder bosses. If I lower our goal down to reaching Enderman Slayer 4 first and then going for Enderman Slayer 5, this changes our total boss count all the way from 200 tier 2s down to just 60. Then, if you use these two gear upgrades to go from Enderman Slayer 4 to Enderman Slayer 5, you can start tackling tier 3 bosses and get there with another 35 kills. Thus, you'd be left killing 95 total Enderman Slayer bosses instead of the 200 that we had before, which is a pretty significant reduction in the amount of bosses that you're going to have to complete. So how is this done? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you might have otherwise thought. Since the first half of this grind will be done off of tier 2s, let's talk about the gear that you should start off with prior to completing any Enderman Slayer bosses at all. For your weapon, I'd suggest something like the Aspect of the Dragons, a Livid Dagger, Flower of Truth, Fell Sword, or even a Shadow Fury if you have one. These five weapons all vary in different strength, prices, and requirements, so don't worry too much about which one you should get. Just pick one that suits you the best and stick with it for now. A quick side note for AOTD users though, I'd strongly suggest getting a Dragon Fuse Glove to pair with your Aspect of the Dragons as this will give you an easier time and shouldn't be too expensive of an upgrade either. It's not required, but it is helpful. For your armor, I would strongly suggest the Superior Dragon Armor Set as this is one that I personally have a lot of experience with, but it should still be doable with full Shadow Assassin, 3 quarters Shadow Assassin with a variety of chestplate options, Necron armor or anything that's equivalent. Once again, don't stress too much about what armor to choose, just go for the one that you feel like will suit you the best depending on the stats you've already got, or if you already own any of the sets I've just mentioned, then just keep the one that you have right now. For your pet, it is critical that you use at least a level 60 rare Enderman pet. If you can, go for an epic, legendary, or even mythic and obviously get it to as high of a level as possible. 
The Enderman pet is extremely important because of the damage reduction perk that it has, and for an inexperienced player, this is basically necessary. Other options such as the Baby Yeti and Blue Whale might be stronger for tanking, but the Enderman pet gives the perfect balance between solid DPS and excellent EHP. For your talismans, I would strongly recommend tackling these bosses at around 500 magical power, as this will make the fight extremely easy. However, it still can be done with as low as 300 if you are skilled enough. I'd recommend either using the Silky or Bloody Power Stone because they're super cheap and quite strong, but you can get away with the default Warrior Power Stone just fine. But the last and most important piece of gear that you will need for early game E-Man Slayer has 100% got to be a healing wand. If you weren't already aware, the Revenant Slayer rewards you with a set of healing wands for each tier, finishing with the Wand of Atonement at Revenant Slayer 7. I would highly suggest pushing for Rev 7 and getting that Wand of Atonement before you even attempt Enderman Slayer, but because I know a lot of you guys are likely too lazy, you can get by with the Wand of Restoration that is unlocked at Revenant Slayer 6. Other optional support items include a Radiant, Mana Flux or Overflux Power Orb, an Ornate or Florid Zombie Sword, an Artisanal or Dragon Shortbow, and even an Endstone Sword. But I've personally done Tier 2 bosses without any of these, and you should only consider them if you're seriously struggling and need the extra support. However, now that I've covered the large variety of different gear options you have to tackle this boss, let's just jump straight into an Enderman Slayer fight that I recorded earlier so I can show you all the strategy behind it. Spawning in the boss now, notice how I immediately distanced myself quite a bit here, and I used my short bow to tackle the hits phase, where you need to just hit the boss 30 times before you can actually deal proper damage to it. The catch is that this hits phase deals a lot of damage to your player if you get close, and this damage actually stacks up over time the longer the hits phase lasts. Optionally, you can place down a Radiant Orb or a Mana Flux for the extra support right at the start of the boss here, but I chose not to just to show you that it is possible possible to do it without one. Either way, once he's in the regular vulnerable phase, you should be safe to just go in and get as much melee damage in as possible with your weapon of choice. Make sure to keep an eye on your health at all times and use your healing wand to manage it well, and if you do drop down to a scarily low amount of health, you can use a few ornate or florid zombie sword charges to bring you back up to a comfortable amount. Most of your healing should be coming from the siphon enchant on your melee weapon, however the extra support healing from the wand will make the fight very convincing, and the ornate or florid zombie sword serves really well for panic healing just in case you mess something up. Then, once you've brought the boss down to 8 million health, it will go back into hits phase where you can distance yourself again and dwindle it down with a bow. Alternatively, you can just brute force it like I did and chug through its health with the melee weapon. However, this is extremely risky, and if you're not fully confident with your setup and you haven't had that much practice with the bosses yet, just stick to using a ranged weapon. This next vulnerable period is very similar to the last. However, the boss will periodically spawn Yang Glyphs around you, which will instantly kill you if you don't stand next to them within 5 seconds of spawning. These Yang Glyphs are just beacon blocks that he throws out in a small radius, and all you need to do is run or teleport to them, stay there for a brief moment, and then go back to attacking the boss as usual. His third and final hits phase then occurs at 4 million HP, where once again you can either back up a bit and bow him down or melee it if you're comfortable. Once out of hits phase, he'll begin to start spawning Yang Glyphs again, where you can use the same strategy as before to remove them, shortly before finishing the boss off entirely. So as you saw from that tier 2 fight, this boss has a few moving parts to it, but overall is quite easy assuming that you're properly equipped. On screen now should also be a showcase of all the important stats of the profile that I'm testing on, so you can see exactly how I've reforged and enchanted my gear, as well as what my profile stats look like. The weapons and armor that I did use in this fight were a little bit overkill because you don't actually need to recombobulate anything or hyper max the enchants in any way, but I did on this profile because it's just what I had lying around. I also purposefully didn't use any equipment, a power orb, or an endstone sword just to show you how little gear you could actually get away with, but just remember that if you are struggling, you've got a plethora of different support items that you can always fall back on. But that's enough of the tier 2s, because now I'm going to cover how to tackle tier 3s and finish off your Enderman Slayer 5 grind. Now that you're confidently taken out tier 2s and you've brought yourself all the way up to Enderman Slayer 4, you've got yourself access to the full Final Destination armor set and the Void Edge Katana. It is possible to upgrade to the Void Edge Katana as soon as you unlock it at Enderman Slayer 3, so if you would rather have done it sooner, that's an option as well. Nonetheless, here's my recommended gear requirements that you need for tier 3 bosses. 
For your weapons, you absolutely want to have the Void Edge Katana by now. It's cheap, you've already got the requirements for it, and it's fully designed to knock out Enderman Slayer bosses. For your armor, you also want to be upgrading to the full Final Destination armor set. It is technically possible to do tier 3s in Superior Dragon or Necron armor, but both of these options require significantly more effort, a ton of support items, and are a lot less reliable. As a result, get yourself a set of full Final Destination armor and grind the kills on all four pieces to 10k kills for the defense perk. You are able to buy the pieces with the kills already farmed, but sitting in the Zella Bruiser hideout for about six to eight hours with this set on will get you to 10k kills with ease. You can also farm some summoning eyes in the process to get some more money for the rest of the setup, so you may as well just grind the kills yourself. I also want to briefly mention the Reaper Mask for your armor here. If you are really, really struggling with tier 3s, you can cut your damage by a large margin and swap out the Final Destination Helmet for a Reaper Mask, and this should solve all of your HP problems. The only issue that I have with the Reaper Mask is that your bosses will be a lot slower, but slower bosses are better than no bosses at all. Either way, for your pets, you definitely want to keep sticking to using at least a rare Enderman pet, However, this time I would strongly suggest getting it above level 80. At this stage, having a higher rarity pet like an epic, legendary, or mythic is also going to be very, very beneficial, but if you can't afford one, don't stress because a level 80 rare should still do the job fine. Your talismans this time around should also be giving you no less than 450 magical power. While tier 2s are quite simple and can be done with around 300, Tier 3s are very deadly and you will struggle a lot more if you haven't reached around 500 MP by now. Once again, shooting for as much magical power as possible is arguably the best upgrade that you can make to your setup because this is where the bulk of your damage actually comes from. I'd also suggest using the Hurtful Power Stone if you can afford it, but sticking to Bloody or Silky should suffice if you've got the other items on this list. And lastly, I could not recommend the Wand of Atonement more for this boss. The only way that you're going to be able to get away using a lower tier wand is if you have an Overflux Power Orb, and that not only has a Sven 7 requirement, but it also is extremely expensive. Speaking of the Overflux, if you are able to afford one, it will make tier 3s a total joke and will also be useful for tier 4s in the future, but I'm going to assume that most of you don't really want to farm that hard, so I'll just use a Mana Flux for this video. Similar to tier 2s, you've also got a bunch of other handy support items, such as the Ornate slash Florid Zombie Sword, a Shortbow of your choice, and the Enstowed Sword from before. However, unlike tier 2 bosses, you will also need to bring either a summoning ring, a necromancer sword, or a reaper scythe with at least two tank zombie souls in it, preferably from any master mode floor. You might have heard some people saying that Wither Spectre souls from the Crimson Isles also works, and while this is true, they are a lot more likely to die during the fight, so I wouldn't exactly recommend using them as you'll be replacing them quite often. Nonetheless, now that we've covered the gear upgrades, let's jump straight into a tier 3 completion so I can show you how to efficiently complete those. Spawning in a tier 3 now, notice how I start by immediately placing down a mana flux, followed by spawning in my tank zombies and then jumping to safety. This is because the hits phase for tier 3 bosses requires double the amount of hits from tier 2, and summoned tank zombies are much faster at dealing with the boss than we will ever be with a bow. Once he's out of hits phase, the summons are then recalled and I drop down to melee the boss, holding down the crouch key for the full Final Destination set bonus to be active. I'm also periodically right-clicking my sword for the right-click ability and swapping to my Wand of Atonement to get that extra healing coming in. Make sure that you fight tier 3 bosses with a bit of soul flow in reserve, as both the Final Destination armor and the Void Edge Katana require both normal mana and soul flow for the abilities to work. These abilities are very important to shred through the boss as fast as possible. However, be careful using up all of your mana in the process as you still want to make sure that you have enough to keep the Wand of Atonement healing at all times. The next hits phase happens at 32 million HP, where I summon my tank zombies once again and jump back to safety. Then, once the hits phase is over, I drop back down with the same strategy as before, straining through his HP slowly but surely. This vulnerable phase will start to spawn Yang Glyphs, so just like tier 2 bosses, keep a lookout for those and make sure that you remove them safely. Aside from that, this part is just managing your health and mana while maintaining good DPS, where the third and final hits phase will occur at 15 million HP. Just like previously, I spawn my summons, jump to safety, and let them handle it, dropping back down into the fight when it's ready. This final vulnerable phase is quite important, as he not only spawns the Yang Glyphs, but he also spawns Nukubi heads. These are basically just little Enderman heads that will float around the boss, staring you down and dealing damage over time if you don't attend to them. 
The damage they deal actually does stack over time and get stronger and stronger if you don't do anything about it, but you can easily counter them by just staring them dead in the eyes and it'll cause them to disappear. You can actually see here that I looked at one of the heads while still meleeing the boss, so generally speaking, you can take care of them much easier than Yang Glyphs, as you don't have to physically move to them to get rid of them. Either way, the final part of the fight is smooth sailing, timing my abilities well, managing my health with the Wand of Atonement, and then finally finishing off this boss. So as you saw from from that tier 3 completion, it's very manageable once you've got the right gear and had some practice. On screen now should be a quick showcase of all the gear and stats from this test, and as you can see, my helmet doesn't even have 10,000 kills on it, even though I recommended it earlier. My Void Edge is relatively generously enchanted, but if you're going to eventually upgrade it into a Vorpal Katana or an Atom Split Katana, going heavy on the enchants is definitely worth it. I did use a Legendary Enderman for this test as it's what I had, however, an Epic or even a Rare one that's around level 80 should suffice. Putting a Dwarf Turtle Shellmet on the pet is definitely more important than what rarity it is, so don't stress about going for a high level mythic one as you don't need that. The rest of my profile is pretty standard, and like I mentioned in the gear recommendations, there are other support items that you can use, such as an overflux, an endstone sword, or even a reaper mask if you do find yourself struggling a lot, so if you do need those things, then definitely use them. All in all, getting good practice in and learning the muscle memories is the most important part of this fight though, and now that you're fully ready to start farming tier 3s, you should be able to get to Enderman Slayer 5 in no time. So there you have it, a clear-cut, easy-to-follow progression guide to achieve your very own Juju Shortbow. All in all, it's pretty simple once you break it down into the parts that I did in today's video, and you choose to put a couple of hours into grinding the Slayer. Before I end the video though, I would like to mention that you can very well use some of the Tier 3 gear recommendations to complete Tier 2 bosses, but in most cases, I've deliberately left them out just to show how little gear that you actually need. A good example of this is using summons to do the hits phase for tier 2s. While you absolutely can do this, a Necromancer Sword, Summoning Ring, or even a Reaper Scythe are all pretty expensive items, so cutting down costs to get started with these bosses early is generally more appealing for most players. I also purposefully made the completions in today's video as bare bones and as difficult on myself as possible, by playing on accounts that don't have the greatest stats, I purposefully lowered my magical power, and I also wasn't using some of the higher end gear that I definitely could have. This is purely for demonstrative purposes though, to show that it is possible to do it with low end gear, but I do highly recommend going for slightly better equipment than what I use in today's video, because that will likely speed up your grind and make things easier. Nonetheless, hopefully you found this video useful or informative in some way. I wish you the best of luck acquiring your very own Juju Shortbow, and with that being said, I'll catch you all in the next video.